Hey, what's up? It's Jared with Ditch Auto, and I'm here to answer the question today whether or not you can edit video on a two-in-one laptop. Now, a two-in-one laptop is a laptop that can also open up into a tablet. Uh, so to show you, um, you know, it, it closes up like a laptop, but it also opens and flips over into a tablet. Um, and you could even use it in a kind of convertible mode such as, uh, you know, like this, it can kind of sit and it's it's pretty cool. Like I, I'm really digging uh, this laptop. Um, I've really enjoyed using it. It's a fantastic little tool, but can you use it for some heavier lifting like edit, editing video? Uh, the pros of this is that it is so light um, that it makes it convenient to move around and carry it around. So if you are, you know, shooting video and you're a vlogger or something like that, you, you know, you're probably on your feet a lot moving around. You want the lightest gear possible and especially a laptop can, can weigh you down quite a bit. Um, so that's the question that I want to answer today is whether or not you can edit video from something like this. Now, we shoot a lot of our stuff in 4K these days. Um, 4K typically takes a lot of processing power, requires a good GPU for graphics performance, and then also, you know, processor and RAM come into play too. So with this laptop, this is a uh, HP Spectre 360. Um, it's almost a fully maxed out version. It has the i7 uh, dual core 7th generation chip, which is the newest at the time that I'm recording this video, uh, the 7500U. Uh, so it is a dual core chip. It has 16 gigabytes of RAM and a 512 gigabyte internal solid state drive uh, for you know fast data or fast data transfer. Um, what it doesn't have is a very good graphics card. It has the Intel uh, chipset graphics, the 620 series, um, which is on the higher end of of on chip graphics, but it's still just not. It's not much. It's not going to get you too far. So um, with this laptop, you know. Using tablet mode to edit video isn't really um, isn't really a thing yet. You know, you wouldn't benefit too much from going into tablet mode on this two-in-one and trying to edit video using the stylus that came with this laptop or your fingertip or anything like that. That's going to be kind of a challenge for you. Um, but can you edit? Is this something that you can use to knock out a video or two? And maybe you have a tower at home, something with more power, your bigger, heavier laptop that has more power at home, can you take this on the road with you and edit some video? So I'm opening up Premiere Pro right now and a 4K project that uh, we recently shot. Uh, we have our project open, so that opened up pretty quickly. Um, you know, it's, it's, not, it's not gonna be necessarily the editing process, the cutting of clips, the realigning of things, that's going to be slow. It's going to be scroll, you know, scrabbling through your footage, kind of looking at your footage, and then also rendering out your project. That's what's going to take some time. So we're in 4K. We have 4K footage right now. We're at one half um, quality on our preview, our our playback over here, and I'm able to kind of move through this footage, this uh, clip here. All right, so there it is. If I try to play back, I'm getting some choppiness. I'm definitely going to have to go down below. Even going down to one eighth, it's still, I mean, it's playing back without being super choppy, but you could see the quality of the footage go downhill from there. So can you edit from that? Of course you can. You could definitely edit at that quality. Um, the playback, you're really just wanting to, to kind of see what's going on. It doesn't have to be super crisp, clear quality. You know, if you filmed it right, you, you should know that your footage is sharp and everything there. Um, so playback is really just about aligning your shots and making your cuts, uh, you know, and adding transitions or whatever you're going to do. Uh, but, you know, that part, I think we could we the could probably that, survive. Uh, so, you know, if I go and and maybe create a couple of of cuts here on this footage. There's a little bit of a lag there. Let's just uh, get rid of that shot and then do a ripple delete. So there's a little bit of a lag that I wouldn't be getting if I was on a quad core machine uh, that maybe had a, a better uh, graphics card in it. I would definitely would be, things would be moving along a little bit quicker. Is this horrible? No, it's not. I could definitely live on this. I wouldn't want to have to live with it every single day, but if I was trying to travel light, I can live with the actual editing process here. That part would not be 
uh, that wouldn't be the end of the world for me for sure. All right, so I have a project that I'm ready to render out, and this is where the true challenge is gonna be. I believe on a system like this, when you have your video done, when you've got it all chopped up and edited and ready to go and you wanna render it out, it's probably gonna be one of those situations where you start the rendering process, you make sure you're plugged into some power, you walk away and you come back a few hours later, depending on the project, of course. This is a 4K project, so I definitely wouldn't recommend, you know, using something like this to edit 4K. If we were editing 1080 footage, it definitely would be much easier on the system. Uh, and you're, I'm on battery power right now, but you're definitely not going to want to be on battery power when you're editing because it is sucking the battery life dry out of this laptop. So let's go ahead and... Uh, we are going to render this out. Probably the best thing to do here is to uh, open up that rendering job in Media Encoder instead of rendering it out within Premiere Pro because then you can close Premiere, maybe get a little bit of your system resources back uh, when you start the rendering process. But you're definitely not going to be able to do anything else with your laptop while it is uh, is rendering things out here. It's definitely not gonna happen. So this rendering job is definitely gonna take uh, quite a bit of time. This video is, uh, is, is pretty lengthy. Um, it's about a 17 minute long video. And so the rendering out process is probably gonna take at least an hour, maybe a little bit more to render out 4K video, uh, a 17 minute, 17 minute clip. The time is climbing a little bit right now. It's up to about an hour 20. Sometimes that can range and uh, you know it's hard to say how long that project will take until it's done. I'm just gonna kind of watch it for a minute and we'll just get an idea of how long this is gonna take. Now, if we were rendering out this same exact project on a tower that had maybe you know a GTX 1080 in it, a decent amount of RAM and, a, and, a, and an average processor, a project like this would probably render out in around you know 30 minutes or so tops. Um, which would be relatively quick. Editing, uh, rendering out 4K on a good tower isn't quite real time. It's a little slower than real time uh, unless you really go with uh, heavy lifting with a big machine that's expensive. Um, but on a two-in-one like this, you're probably not going to get anything better uh, than you know several hours of render time when you're when you're editing and rendering out 4K. 1080 is definitely going to be a lot easier. I found that uh, rendering out 1080 footage takes sometimes less than half the time of 4K, which makes sense because 4K is much more than twice the size of 1080, so totally makes sense there. Um, right now it's saying about three hours, and now it's getting to the point where it's not climbing anymore. So this 17-ish minute clip, video clip, is going to take about three hours to render out. This definitely is not ideal, and this is, like I said, 4K. So you can expect maybe like a 17-minute video uh, that's 1080. Exporting out at 1080 would probably end up taking an hour and a half, um, maybe closer to two hours if you have any effects running over the top of your footage. Um, such as text, uh, motion, and stuff like that. So can you edit video from a two-in-one? Yes, you definitely can. It's just not going to be an ideal experience. Using uh, Adobe Premiere Pro usually requires a little bit of power in order to render out at a reasonable amount of time. So this definitely is not going to be your video editing machine. You can cut up video in a pinch and you can render it out if you have the time to wait for it but I would definitely recommend going with something with a bit more power, uh, such as a, uh, you know, a laptop that has a quad-core processor and at least has um, a, a GTX chip in it of some sort, um, maybe even a 10-series chip because the, they're putting these 10-series chips in these laptops. They're still relatively small. My editing machine right now is a Dell XPS 15 that has a quad-core processor, 16, or 32 gigs of RAM actually, and a GTX 1050, which would definitely chew through footage and render out in a fraction of the time that this two-in-one would. So two-in-ones are great, they're fantastic, they're small, they're mobile, they are actual laptops, whereas some of these laptops these days, you can't even consider them laptops because they're so big, they're more like you know foldable desktops, but a two-in-one is underpowered for doing heavy lifting things like editing video. Uh, even 1080 would be a bit of a challenge on here. But we put it through the test. We looked at what was possible. 
It has now jumped up to three hours and 45 minutes, so it has jumped up even a little bit more. Uh, I definitely do not want to wait almost four hours for a 17 minute video to render out. But if I was trying to pack light, if I was trying to take the most minimal gear that I could, I would definitely be sacrificing a little bit with the performance, but this two-in-one has much better battery life, is much more portable than my Dell XPS 15. So there it is. I have some links down in the description below for this particular laptop, which is fantastic. If it wasn't for video editing, everything else about it is perfect. I have a couple of other videos about it as well that you should check out. The links are in the description below. The link to this specific model is in the description below over on Amazon, so you can check that out, see the pricing, see the specs. And then these Samsung drives I live and die by, uh, they are fantastic and we even edit videos straight from them, they're so fast. I'll put a link in the description to that too. Uh, if you're interested in my review of this particular laptop, make sure to check out the link over on State of Tech. We talked about the laptop as a whole. Um, and then over here on Ditch Auto, we talked about can you edit video from a two-in-one such as this? Can you edit photos from a two-in-one such as this particular model? Uh, so if you're interested in that video, check it out. Give us a thumbs up if you like this video and a subscribe if you want to be notified when we have new videos coming out. Thanks so much and we'll see you next time here on Ditch Auto.